Good evening. This is Pamela, and you're listening to Watchmen on the Pod. Um, I wanted to come to you uh, just to tell you a few things, actually, and let you know what's going on um, on my side. Uh, first off, there has been rumors and video, so I believe it's true that this is happening. I cannot say that this man really is the, the number one antichrist, but he is an antichrist. We do know that. Um, in Israel, they have crowned what they are saying is their Messiah. Um, you actually can find this on uh, YouTube. Um, you can find it in every language except for the English language. I do not know why. I can't answer that. I have heard that... Um, what is coming into the U.S. has been censored by whom? I can't tell you that again. I do not know. But I found that to be very interesting. And uh, you can look it up for yourself. If you know Spanish, there's many videos in Spanish. There's many in German. There's many in French. There's many in um, Hebrew, obviously, and in Arabic also. So if you want to, go for it. You can look it up this man's name I've actually typed it into Google to see if I could actually find out how to pronounce it believe it or not it won't give it to me um, so I believe the spelling of his name is J I Z A I can't even remember isn't that funny but his name's not important to me he's 30 years old and it is the Ashkenazi Jews that are saying that he is the Jewish Messiah and if anyone has done a study on the Ashkenazi Jews, I do not believe that they are true Jews from the line of Judah. I do not believe that. I do know that Ashkenazi did come from Gomer, which is Japheth's um, lineage, not Judah's lineage. So anyway, with that being said, um, <coughs> God has placed upon my heart last night to uh, continue in the study that I had started several months ago and I had started it and you know I just I just laid it down I, I laid it down so it's been about a year I believe it was because it was right before he sent me to Turkey that I began to study this out and I got so engrossed in just Oh, the origins of Turkey and, and the roots that how deep it goes into like Babylon and Nimrod and and the Assyrian and all that. I was just absolutely taken back by all of that that I never realized. You know, I, I remember years ago, back in like 2001, 2002, my sister and I, you know, we, we used to study all, all the time together. And I remember telling her, you know what, Russia's not the where the king of the north is coming it's coming from turkey i remember telling her that and i had tried to tell other people that but they did not accept it come on all right so now what we are going to do is we are going to read a few scriptures to show you exactly what the lord is showing me we are going to start in hmm let's start with proverbs 25 yeah, Proverbs 25. And it is in verse 2, 25 2. It is the glory of Elohim to conceal a thing, but the glory of kings is to search it out. The word of God has many things in it, but we are to search it out. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it is the glory of kings to search that matter out. There is treasures within the word of God. God wants to open up his word to us so we can understand and we know that we know that we know. Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. He is the Messiah. He is our Savior of the world. He came through a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He died upon that cross as our Passover lamb. Did he not? Yes, he did. He fulfilled all of the feasts. <coughs> exactly as God has ordained them now there's several things that we are going to do that we need to understand 
and that we need to know. All right, Father, let's see. Where are we going to start on this? Like I had said, the Lord had uh, showed me many things in his word before I went to Turkey. And I had gotten, I mean, so much. I mean, sometimes, you know, you can get so much that, I mean, you just stand there in awe. I, I'm in awe all the time of God because he's just amazing. Um, go to Romans chapter 11, verse 25. And this was Apostle Paul speaking. And he says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of Elohim are without repentance. For as you in times past have not believed Elohim, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they may also obtain mercy. For Elohim has concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. O oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of Elohim! How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out! For who has known the mind of Yahavah, or who has been his counselor, or who has given first given to him it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Right now, Israel is still blinded. They're crowning, or they did crown, I should say, this man. I can't pronounce his name, like I said. I, I can't pronounce his name. You can look it up, though, and you can, like I said find it in every language except for the English language. We here in the West, for some reason, have a blackout. I don't know why, but they have, they have blocked out anything coming in concerning this in the English language. But it, like I said, it's in Spanish, it's in Hebrew, it's in Arabic, it's in German, it's in French. It's in every language except for English for some reason. You can search it out. Now, is this man the Antichrist? I can't say yes. I can't say no. I do not know. God has not showed that to me. But he is an Antichrist. He could be just one of many. I, I can't say. I do not know. But I know that Jesus Christ, Yahashua HaMashiach, is our Messiah as well. Now, this study, book, however you want to word it, that he is giving me to write is going to show without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of what was prophesied. And right now the Jews are saying, and I, I had read this translation of this one video where they were saying that Jesus did not fulfill what the prophecies had written. That's why they don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. They have misinterpreted them. And how they did that was, it's not because it's not in the Torah. It is in the Torah. It's absolutely in the Torah. But they also believe in the oral tradition, the oral word, they call it, which they have put in a book called the Talmud. The Talmud is demonic, okay? Back in Jesus' day, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and all of them, Jesus said that they preferred the tradition of men, and that's what the Talmud was. That's what they learned. That's what they, they followed was the Talmud, the Babylonian Talmud. And um, 
It is not the word of God. Oh, yes, there's some of the word of God in there, but that's how Satan does. He will throw lies mixed up with the truth and get you all confused where you don't know which way is up if you do not have the Holy Spirit of Almighty God, the Ruach HaKodesh. So, anyway, this right here, he has given me, and it's a continuation of the cross because... You need to know that you know that you know. So as of going through this, it's so very important that you have your Bible in hand, okay? Never, ever take my word or anyone else's word. I don't care how many degrees they have. I do not care how long they've been serving God. You must, yourself, open up your Bible to make sure they're reading directly from the Word of God. And they're not misquoting it. They're not mistranslating it. Because you know what? Some don't mistranslate it or misquote it on purpose. We're human. We're flawed. Okay? We're not infallible. Only God is. And his word is infallible. But we are fallible. We make mistakes. So in order to not, oh, what is it? Just believe what we're saying. Because as I said, we could have misquoted, mistranslated, whatever. You've got the word open for yourself and say, hey, wait a minute. No, she, she quoted it wrong. She added this word or she took this word out. Because it happens. We're human. Okay? Now, um, what we are going to do is I'm going to show you through the Old Testament when it comes to the feast days that points right to Jesus and how he fulfilled them. Go to Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 through 17, and it says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. First off, I'm going to inject here. There's a lot of people, they'll say, hey, Paul says, don't you, don't you judge me. I can celebrate Christmas. He says, you know, we're not supposed to have, you know, let anyone judge us in respect of a holy day. Okay, Christmas is not a holy day. Plain and simple. Easter is not a holy day. Plain and simple. Those are not what Paul is talking about. Pastor Paul tells us the holy day, new moon, and the Sabbath days are a shadow of things to come. Jesus Christ being the embodiment of them. They are a picture of Jesus Christ. And as we go through this, you will see and understand what he fulfilled at his first coming. The holy days, like I said, Apostle Paul is talking about, has nothing, 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 nothing to do with Palm Sunday, Good Friday, Easter, or Christmas. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, um, Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 through 19 says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and to let them be for signs and for seasons and for days. Oh, hold on. <clears throat> and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Here we just read that God created the sun, moon, stars on the fourth day, and he created them not only to divide the day and the night, but for signs and seasons. And the one book that I read from, well, now all the time, is the complete messianic Alatov scriptures. And in verse 14, this is how it is translated. And Elohim said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, solemnities, sacred festivals and days and years right there. The seasons, look it up. That's what it means for the sacred festivals because they're gods. They're gods. He ordained it. He put it up in the heavens. Okay, he did. The moon, sun, stars, all 
proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ. We should understand that. Um, Apostle Paul stated that these were given as a shadow of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the fulfillment of them. He is the one that placed them in the time frame. They are in for a specific purpose, always pointing to Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus says, in the volume of the book, it is written of me. The Holy Scriptures scream, the Lord Jesus Christ. They do, if we would just read it and understand it. But we cannot understand it in our carnal mind. It is spiritually discerned. Therefore, we must ask God to teach us, to give us his wisdom. Now, also, I want you to remember verse 19. Verse 19, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. This is the way God describes a day as well as how the Jews still describe it to this day. The new day begins at sunset to sunset, a 24-hour period. Instead of sunrise, sunrise, like the rest of us does in the world, they do from sunset to sunset. This is very important to understand. This is not the only place it is written, but this is the first mention of it. All right. God knew there would be many false gods, idols, prophets, and messiahs that were trying to see this people. And that's exactly what is happening right now over in the nation of Israel. This man has risen up. The rabbis have confirmed and said that he is their messiah. And they have literally crowned him. You should see the crown. It's absolutely beautiful. But as Jesus said, you will not, you know, accept me, but one who comes in his own name, you will accept. Therefore, Jesus, Father, God, created the feast and told us very clearly in his word that we would know the true Messiah by his feast because he alone will fulfill them starting at his birth. Like I said, the word of God is spiritually discerned. It is spiritually discerned. The Jews, yes, they have great insight into the Torah, but the thing is they have polluted it with their oral tradition, which is now written in a book called the Talmud. So they have added things into it that does not belong there. Therefore, they are blinded in part because they have mixed the uh, holy with the profane when it comes to these interpretations. They become blinded. Now, God does not want anyone, anyone to be deceived. No one. But unfortunately, we know that there's going to be many that will because there's many on that road that's broad way to lead to destruction. And there's few that's on the straight and narrow path. Um, he has placed everything in his word for us to understand, but we must search it out. As I said, we must be as noble as those Bereans. And search out the scriptures to see if these things be so. All right. You know, a lot of us, we do not understand why God hid it in his word rather than plainly tell us. Well, there's twofold reason, I believe, personally. Uh, one, Satan only knows what God allows him to know, such as he did not know. And so he was rejoicing when Christ was on the cross. But it says that if they would have known, they never would have crucified the Lord of glory. They did not know until it was too late. Two, if we truly love God, we will search, study, and rightly divide the word of truth in order to find the hidden truth he placed throughout his word. But so many these days are happy just to listen to a man and adhere to man's tradition without giving it a second thought. You talk to someone about Christmas in the church. Seriously, I'm not even kidding. I know this firsthand right now. They are so hostile towards you because you, I, I personally do not celebrate Christmas. I don't celebrate Easter. I don't celebrate Good Friday. I don't at all um, because they are not of God. These are man's traditions and it came through the Roman Catholic Church, the Vatican, that they have taken pagan holidays and slapped they Christianized them, I guess you want to say. Christianized them. And they put, like, on the statues and stuff. I've been to Rome. I've been there. God sent me there in January 2020. Wow. You talk about pagan. You talk about wickedness. You talk about darkness. I'm sorry, but I was there. I seen it. I seen the paganism. I seen the idolatry. I seen people kissing the foot 
of what they call is St. Peter, which it's not, and praying. That foot is rubbed, has been handled so much that it's becoming smooth now from people kissing it and praying to this colossal statue that they have said is Peter, which it's not, by the way. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. You've got, you know, you've got, honestly, what was that? Uh, hmm. Diana of the Ephesians with all of those. I call them testicles. Some people call them breasts. I believe they're testicles, bull testicles. The reason I believe that is because they used to um, offer up bull testicles to this goddess Diana of the Ephesians because uh, she was supposed to be the goddess of fertility and these represent fertility. And so you see this statue right there in the Vatican Museum of this goddess Diana with all of these testicles hanging on her. I used to think they were breasts until I had found out later otherwise that I, I don't believe that they're breasts now. I believe that they are bull testicles. Anyway, so you could see so many statues of animals, things that ought not to be in, in, in <laughs> what you call a holy church of God. No, sorry, it's not. A lot of naked statues, a lot of um, mutilated statues. And what I mean by mutilated is there's a lot of the male naked statues with them castrated. They're, 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 what do you want to call it? Genitals? They're genitals? Like, broke off. What happened to them? I don't know what happened to them, but they're, they're not there. Which, you know, I, I mean, I didn't know. <laughs> wasn't really looking for it but I mean it's just weird it's just all weird it's so weird 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 um but yeah what they had done was is they brought in the pagan holy days their holy days their holidays brought them in slapped uh Christian signs on them and saying oh no we're you know we celebrate Christ's birthday on December 25th and we're gonna call it Christ mass well, no, Christ was not born on December 25th, and I will show you exactly when he was born. And I could say, without a doubt, without stuttering, I know exactly when Jesus Christ was born, through the Word. And then, with through the Word, I can go to secular sources from history, from archaeology, from um, astronomical, I guess that's the word you want to call, signs in the skies. All proving exactly the very day that the Lord Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem. I could show you. And it's not me showing you. It's actually God Almighty showing you through his word and letting history confirm it. Okay? And it will be done. Thank you, Jesus. Now, also... We are to study, to show ourselves approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That is so very important. But, you you know, if, if you're just parroting what you've heard and you have not studied it yourself, you are going to be deceived. Because, you know what, I could be a deceiver and you not even know it. And I know people's like, oh, how can you say that? Well, you know what, it's truth. It's absolute truth. I could be and you don't even know it. Because you're just accepting what I say. Don't accept what I say. You know, you could take what I say and then you could search it out to make sure these things are so before you try to rebuke me or, you know, rebuttal me. But don't come back at me by so-and-so says, John MacArthur says, you know, this one says, this one says, this one. No, no, no. Tell me what the word of God says and show me why you believe that what I'm saying is wrong. And then I will accept it. You know, I would rather be corrected than to be flattered and end up in hell because I'm believing something that's untrue and teaching things that is not true. So if whatever you hear from, you know, that I have said, if I'm saying something that goes against the word of God, that is contrary to the word of God, and you could show me where I'm wrong, I will accept it and I will repent. And I will not only repent, but I will put it back up and I will say, listen, I was wrong here because you know what? I would rather be humbled, humbled by somebody showing me that I'm wrong than to go around thinking I'm okay and I'm not. No, that's not worth it to me because it's not about me. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything should point to him.
not about me not about me now I ain't gonna have many charts and stuff I will put on this video no not on this one itself but as we go along to show you um, I will be using the Gregorian calendar I will be using God's whole God's holy calendar but also the Jewish civil calendar there is two different calendars um, I will show like I said that Jesus his birth I I'm convinced I'm convinced that he was born on September 11th in 3 BC that's the Gregorian calendar in the Jewish calendar the holy calendar it would be first Tishri which is the Feast of Trumpets in 3 BC there's many things that I will be able to show you by the help of the Lord God Almighty um, through the stars and through history that will confirm what is being said um, also we're gonna go from there uh, but before we begin even at that point we will have to go through and find out the little tidbits like a breadcrumb almost little golden nuggets that the father has placed in his word to tell us exactly when his son was born and it's in there you know we are told about um, Zacharias who was the father of John the Baptist when it was his course to go in and to work in the temple we need to find out now that what that means is we've got to go to the Old Testament and find out when his course was and then go and find out wait a minute so when Zacharias came out of the temple he was dumb he could not speak anymore because the angel had shut up his mouth because he was in unbelief and then when Mary had a visitation from Gabriel told her that God was going to have the Holy Ghost overshadow her and that holy thing <laughs> was going to be the Son of God and then she went to her cousin Elizabeth who was already six months pregnant Mary just conceived Elizabeth six months pregnant meaning that there is six months between John and Jesus so then we find that when Jesus goes to get baptized by John we found he was almost 30 years of age meaning his birthday had not come yet but we know that John was already 30 years of age why because he had to follow the Levitical law he could not do anything until he was 30 years old now we also know that after Jesus was baptized the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights this is so very important and then when he came down what happened he went into the temple and started his ministry which tells me that while he was away he turned 30 so his birthday he had Wow happy birthday to him being in the wilderness tempted to Satan huh came back down and began his ministry and he spoke in the synagogue reading from the Holy Scriptures all of these things is in the Word of God it's there for our understanding but it is not just a simple read that you see it and, and and you know it no because it's spiritually discerned it's in there but you've got to love the truth in order to search it out to see if it is so and it is so so I'm gonna leave that there I know I've rambled and I don't want to ramble because that's just that's ugly you don't know vain profane babbling or anything going on at all but that is what I will be doing and I do not know how long it's gonna take I have no clue but I don't want to rush through it but then I don't want to be lagging behind either if that makes any sense to you this is something that's very very important to me so I am asking for you all to pray keep me in your prayers please I will need it um, I want to make sure that I am hearing from God himself I mean I have got books and notes and just everything you can imagine in order to bring this all together but if it's not done simply and in a way to where it's understood by those who are born again then what good is it right you know you know so I love you all so very very much I'm gonna stop it there 
keep me in your prayers, please. Stay in the word of God, please. Um, next time I will hopefully begin to be able to start with this because what I'm going to try to do is once I get a section done, bring it to you, read it, then continue with the next section rather than do the entire thing because like I said, I don't know how long it's going to take. I, I just don't. And, you know, it, it's really cool to do it this way also, I think, because that way, you know, if, if you've got something you could add, you could write me on watchmanonthepod.com or you could write me, here's my email, it's all lowercase letters, Pamela McDonald 82 at yahoo.com. That's P-A-M-E-L-A-M. C D O N A L D 82 at yahoo.com. You can write me there. You know, give me your input. You know, give me your observations and things. I really covet them. I do. I mean, iron sharpens iron, brothers and sisters. I don't know it all. You don't know it all. But together we have, we hold the entire puzzle and we each have pieces, you know. And uh, I do not have my comments open on YouTube. And the reason being is because I have gotten so, when I had my comments open, I would have people that's very argumentative. Um, instead of, you know, trying to show me, you know, where they believe that I'm wrong, they just, they attack. Or I've had pornography sites put in the comments or just absolute filth. I'm not interested in that. That's not what it's about. And I can sit there and, you know, I could, uh, Oh, what's the word? I can sharpen iron with other people, but I'm not going to sit there and argue about the word of God. I, I'm just, I'm not going to do it. You know, that's, that's not me. Well, that's my old me. That's not me now. And the word tells me to live peacefully with all men when possible. So it is possible to where I could either change the subject, walk away, or close the comments down. So I do not have to be tempted in order to you know get in the flesh and come back you know because you know what I'm still human right we're all human and sometimes you know people try to get underneath their skin to see how far they can push us and it's hard I'll be honest with you it's hard sometimes to you know just shut your mouth and walk away <laughs> it is I know all right so brothers and sisters keep your eyes on Jesus at all times at all times at all times pray for the peace of Israel please um pray that God will unblind them, but we know that they will not be unblinded until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. That right there is another whole study on itself. And I'm telling you what, you know, a lot of people says or believes that it's when, you know, the last Gentile is saved. I don't know if I agree with that because I think about the Amorites when the fullness of their sin was done. That's when it was time to go in. But, uh, so I wonder if the fullness of the Gentiles be come in would be when our iniquity is full. And I tell you, if it's not full, it's it's right there. It's right at the brim. It's about ready to bust over. But I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, keep your eyes on Jesus, brothers and sisters, please. Keep your nose in the book, which is the word of God. And embed the word of God upon the tablets of your heart so you will not sin against God or be deceived. Until next time, please, please get in the word. Get on your knees. Get on your face before God. Cry out to him. Ask him for wisdom.